Hello, welcome to Viewpoints and Points to View. Tonight, I'm with Kevin Stewart Swain, and Kevin's going to tell us about his life, his personal philosophy, and we'll go right to that question right now. Kevin, why don't you tell us a little bit about your achievements in your life, where things started to go well for you. Uh, you can give us any information that you'd like to, and uh, we're really happy to hear what you have to say. Oh, great. Well, I, uh, I was born in England, I immigrated to Canada when I was quite young, didn't fit in with school. The, the, uh, I think even just the cultural differences of being British kind of stood out. So I found, um, I didn't really find my place, that my tribe kind of rejected me. And when I was quite young, I, like you know, 12, 13, I was looking to know what I was going to do for the rest of my life, even that young. And I was also exploring spiritual things. I was checking out transcendental meditation and Buddhism and looking at careers. And I decided I was going to be a musician. So I made the decision to be a musician before I was a musician, before I knew how to play anything. I, had, I decided I was going to be a bass player. Kind of weird. So that, that's what I did, and that's what I've chosen to do with my life. For good or bad, that's where I am right now. And, uh, you know, I just do it to, because uh, I love it, I love the attention. I think one of the things a lot of musicians got into music because they always wanted that acceptance of the tribe that rejected them. I want all these people to love me, you know. Um, and it's been an interesting journey and I, I think I've grown as a person spiritually. I think I've done good, you know, I've, I've made people happy. and. Uh, that's that's where I'm at right now. I've had, I've gotten to play with uh, heroes of my childhood, people I used to listen to on the radio. I've performed with and performed the songs I used to listen to, and actually got to play with that guy, you know. And uh, and I count some incredibly talented people as friends. There's a community we band together. We try to help other people. So these people that you played with that you idolized, mm -hmm. and, uh, do we know them? Who are they? Actually, one is I lies. <laughs> Sounds quite similar to um, I started out with a, a fellow named Barney Bantall, and if you've heard of the Bantall Centers in Vancouver, one of the richest families out here. Uh, in the days I played with him, he was my first major sort of person I played with. He didn't want anyone to know he was a Bantall, so we used to. I, I, I actually, I should ask him sometime. I assume that was the reason, but he called himself Brandon Wolf. And um, I made, uh, started the band with them, did the first record, which even then was a big deal. We're in Little Mountain, which is a famous studio. The producer is Paul Rudolph, that was with Brian Eno and Hawkwind, the guy that replaced Lemmy from uh, Motorhead in uh, that band. So at 16 or 17, whatever I was, I was in some heavyweight situations. Barney went on to win a Juno. I went from Barney to Idle Eyes, who also went on to win a Juno. But I quit both bands, so before I was an adult, before I was 19, I quit two bands that won a Juno, which should be listening overseas, that's our version of the Canadian Grammys. So I was living with this weight of, what did I do? You know, already I'm just, um, fortunately a few years after I quit Idolize, they had a big hit with a song that I'd written with them, so I got some redemption there where a song I, I wrote became a Canadian somewhat hit, and uh, another big producer, a fellow that went on to work with Soundgarden. Which song was that? It was a song called Sander Doesn't Live Here. And uh, yeah, just one of those chance things where, where we wrote this tune and, uh, and it did something. So that was a nice thing. Um, with music, like anything, you know, the 10,000 hour rule, you know, when you put 10,000 hours into you, you know, you start to get a handle on what you're doing. I spent a lot of my 10,000 hours just in top 40 bars across Canada playing other people's songs. Um, so I kind of let that initial success I left, went into just being a cover player and now coming back to my roots of being creative, of writing, of playing original music with original artists and, um, and you know, the dreams are kind of coming true. You mentioned a few other bands or people you work with too. Uh, yeah, okay, after, yeah, after that, so that was my younger years, then we did all this top 40. Um, people like Lee Aaron, who's famous here for a song called What You Do To My Body. Um, she's quite well known internationally. What did you do with her? 
Um, I just performed with her. I, I did. Uh, I did some touring. Okay. I just played with her live. Most of that's what I do. You know, people hire me. Um, I worked with uh, Thor, who there's a if you watch uh, Netflix right now, there's a show called I Am Thor about his life. Interesting fellow. I could go into it, you know, but Thor was another one. Um, <clears throat> anyway, like that sort of culminated. The, the artist that I'm working with that I'm really excited about is a fellow named Al Harlow, who's from a band called Prism, who, you know, were heroes of mine growing up. And it's, it's a real dream come true. So Al and I are making a record. Uh, we've been working with another fellow from my childhood that also grew up in North Van, where I'm from, uh, named Ray Roper, who was with a band called Stonebold. And he's kind of been coming in and out of this too. He kind of brought us together. So, uh, now I'm working with Alan, we're creating uh, his original music, mostly like his vision for himself as an original artist. He's uh, been kind enough to allow me to come in and contribute some songs and input and just help make this dream happen. And it's amazing, we've played live, we create in the studio all the things I want to do, all the things I used to do when I was young. I'm doing it now, so. What is your philosophy in life? And you can relate this particular question to uh, any subject matter that you care to. Okay, philosophy in life. <laughs> it's a big question. Um, well, I believe in God. And... Okay, there's sort of the practical day-to-day -day thing and then there's the lofty thing. I'm gonna go for the lofty thing first. So, I believe in God. My belief is God is that life energy that's in everything. It's in the universe, it's in every human being, every tree, everything. And I believe because of that, you know, the issues in the world about one God, I think there is one God, it's that life force. But the words you choose to describe it and the words or books or philosophies you use to get close to that God are not worth fighting and dying over. And they're all taking you to the same place. I think of a lot of religions and dogmas and books as, as like buses that take you to this final stop. And that final stop isn't Buddhahood or, or getting to where Jesus was or any of the great masters. It's a stop where it goes, this is as far as words and images and concepts can take you. We're leaving you here now. And God's way down there and you can't use words anymore. And any of them that are from the heart and true and honest. You know, I can't say every religious philosophy, every book is for real. It could not be. But the real true ones, the ones that stand the test of time, the ones that were done with love, I think they all take you to that last stop. So when I'm, and I've probably never talked to anybody about this, but when I'm at my most, when I try to connect with that is when I go for walks in the woods near my house and I pray, and I do affirmations. And my prayer is that, in, in all humility, this is just what I think. I think that there's a universal God out there, and I think that I have a choice, free will, the whole mystery of being a human being is, I can deny that and shut myself off and try to be an island, or I can accept it, invite it, and not only bring it into me to be part of that whole pool of life, but to actually, you know, make that pool of life better. And, and so I affirm that, you know, and I ask for my, what I want, and I also give gratitude for what I've got, and with affirmations that I could go into too, and that, that's sort of, that's where I've got to so far in this life. And on a practical day-to-day, -day, I just try to be as honest as I can, I try to be as empathetic as I can, I try to give as much as I can. I try not to get in guilt spirals that I don't, I'm not doing good enough. You know, I, I'm quite comfortable with being imperfect and just being a man and try, if I can do better every day, that's good enough. Like I, I'm, I'm not lazy with it, I'm not, but I'm not guilty with it. You know, I have good days and bad days. I do good things. I try to care about people. I try to really be happy. I try not to feel guilty about being happy. Whether it's, you know, I don't have a lot of money or anything, I'm not leaving a big footprint on the planet. I'm, I'm really trying to give back a lot more than I take. And, and I think it's my right and my duty to be happy. And, uh, 
you know, that's that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Well, Kevin, I just want to uh, thank you so much for coming in here and sharing your very deep personal views and getting down to the fundamental principle of your personal philosophy. It's very dear to each other's heart. And uh, this show is about doing that. It's about allowing for people to have a platform where they can have a few moments in time in this life to leave a message to the rest of the world. Uh, we can have money, we can have all sorts of things that we want to leave behind, but they don't stay anywhere and they eventually dissolve. But what you create in artwork, what you create from your word, your word is the spirit, your own thought. And when you put that forward, you record that as we're doing right now, you're allowing individuals to see you for who you are and how you want to present yourself to be. Once the body's gone, for those who care, and I'm sure there will be some, <laughs> I won't be around too, so I'll have to enjoy the pleasure of your company now. I want to thank you for joining us with Viewpoints and Points to View uh, with uh, Kevin Stewart Swain, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.